I've never tried anything like this before. Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Customs in Switzerland. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a 1 to 64 scale Hot Wheels super van. It's a Masters of the Universe edition with some kind of angry dude on the side, but it's a metal base, beautiful rubber wheels. This is a premium casting. I'm going to use it as my submission to the super huge ginormous build off phase four on the theme of TV or movie vehicles. I'm going to try my hand at the Mutt Cuts Shaggin Wagon from Dumb and Dumber. Hot Wheels released this, but it's just a painted version and that just won't do. So I went shopping and I found this bathroom rug with a very short pile for $4.99 <laughs> and it was about the closest I could find to dog fur. Here's a close-up look. It's going to be a challenge in 1 to 64 scale but let's cut this open and see what's inside. The edges are a bit frayed after cutting. I have to pick off some loose fluff I'm hoping it will peel apart in two clean pieces. So close. No, I'm going to have to pick off this foam backing. But when I do and lay it down on the car, it's thin enough that I think I can make a wrap out of this. I'll do the best that I can. I remember the movie when it first came out, but I didn't re-watch it in preparation for this video. I didn't subject myself to that, even though Jim Carrey's a good Canadian boy. <laughs> the disassembly is just one post in the front. The back is held together by a little tab. Clean windshield. I don't think we'll see much of the interior, but I'll probably respray that. And I might as well keep the premium chassis and wheels. Why not? I often boast about the veracity of the paint stripper that I have access to over here and how quickly it works, but in this case, and I had my suspicions on a premium casting, it only took off this much. But I've already gone to work on this side and the back so I continue that with a rotary tool and pretty soon I'm down to bare metal and ready for primer. Which I thought immediately afterwards is probably unnecessary. See it, I'm going to wrap the whole thing with dog fur and the bare metal would have been just fine. I am currently on a long distance road trip from Switzerland all the way up to Norway and back. It's going to be a three week tour and I didn't want my channel to go dark while I was away so I've already uploaded all of these videos, mostly Saturday releases, a couple of midweek specials for you to enjoy while I'm on the road. I'll be back in mid-August. Speaking of travel, while I was making this, I was in my wife's home country of beautiful Austria. How lucky am I? And I took the little super van with me, because I figured I'd have a bit of downtime, and this is where I started to figure out how to do the wrap. I decided to work out a paper template first. That seemed to be the best route to go. Once I get it fitted properly, all I've got to do is transcribe that onto my dog fur carpet. And it ends up that that was probably the smartest way to go with the least number of seams involved. Now, how to attach the fur to the car? 
Thought I'd start with my go-to super glue. Don't leave home without it. Lay down my template and I found out I really don't need to press it down. It'll catch that rubber mesh on the backing. And I've got nanoseconds to wiggle it into the right position. Only one side at a time. So I fold down the back gate. There's a little bit of wrap around for the edges, which is what I planned for. When I lay down this full side piece, I was happy to discover that that back edge seam is virtually invisible. I just had to fluff up the pile a little bit right there and you can't even tell. So I continue on with that technique. No shortage of how many times I super glued my fingertips together. <laughs> I'm used to that. Pretty soon I had the bulk of the fur wrap completed. I felt like a mutt cuts dog groomer with all the trimming I had to do. Look up in the sky. <laughs> Today's community shout out goes to a fellow customizer. He's in Germany. Goes by Robot. I've been following him for several years now. Very outstanding work. As always, there's a link in the description for you to follow and make your own personal visit at your convenience. I hope you'll follow up on that. I had lots of Google images to go by to see what the add-ons were and I discovered I need to make some separate ears and legs and a tail. I went to work on those just using a thin piece of styrene plate like you see here cut into shape with my dog fur glued down on top of that, but not a total wrap around, just on the face that shows and the edges. The Hot Wheels Super Van was first featured in the 1975 Flying Colors series. It was originally issued with two different tampos on each side. Super Van was cast with the option of not having any side markers, but all later castings have them. The glass color has changed over the life of the casting. In 2003, it was retooled as the 70s van to be in the Hot Wheels Collectors.com Series 2. The movie Dumb and Dumber is a 1994 American buddy comedy film directed by Peter Farrelly and stars Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels, two dumb but well-meaning friends from Providence, Rhode Island, who set out on a cross-country trip to Aspen, Colorado to return a briefcase full of money to its owner, thinking it was abandoned as a mistake, though it was actually left as a ransom. It's one of the more popular comedies from the 90s, which spawned a sequel and a prequel as well. That's really milking it. After consulting Google Images yet again, I discovered there's one more piece to be furred up, and that's the front grill that does not show in the real car. I'm happy with all that I got done while I was away in Austria, but that time comes to a close and we pack everything up and catch the night train back home to Switzerland.
The first thing I do is airbrush the only primed interior into a dog fur brown. I use some modeling clay to craft a big nose and a tongue that needs some paint. They'll feature prominently on the front of the supervan, and I leave those to dry up overnight. Putting the various parts back together is the same process as with any other project, just a bit furrier this time. So in goes the windshield and the painted interior. The premium metal base and the nice wheels never got touched. I click back into position easily and I secure the front post with a screw. I've left the ears and other parts till the very end and they just get glued on and the fur sticks to the fur <laughs> very well. Here's the front engine cover. It goes on as a separate piece and it looks a whole lot better once I put on the nose. Bottom centered and the tongue fits underneath that like so. Instant recognition. The last thing I do is print the Mutt Cuts signage. It's a laser decal and I put that on a piece of thin styrene plate. Filed all the edges to size and blackened. And like everything else, they go on with a minimal amount of super glue. Custom Rhode Island license plate is the very final touch between the rhinestone taillights and the mud cuts shagging wagon is done. Let's have a closer look. I hope you would know without a thumbnail or a description that this was the mud cuts movie vehicle from Dumb and Dumber. I did the best that I could and I think it came out pretty well. Considering I work with a bath mat, you really can spot where the seams are. Rhinestone headlights. I like the nose and the tongue the best. Premium chassis and wheels. They do roll. Not a racer, though. And a far cry from what I started with, with the 70s super van done up in Masters of the Universe livery. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. It was easier than I thought it was going to be, although it did have its challenges working in such a small scale. It's yet another vehicle that I'd like to do in a bigger size to get it just right, and that would make a great gift for one of my grandchildren. I hope you enjoyed watching my Phase 4 build of the super huge ginormous build-off sponsored by Diecast Graveyard. I'd appreciate it if you'd vote for this one when the recap video comes out. Wishing you a fine day today. It's coffee time.